In this video, we're going to take a look at histograms. So you should recognize from GCSE maths that we can represent groups continuous data in a histogram. You should also be aware that histograms allow us to represent group data with unequal class intervals. So unlike say a bar chart where we do need equal class intervals, the same is not true for a histogram. Histograms are also particularly useful as they allow us to see how the data is distributed. Now we do also need one formula here for histograms. And this isn't anything new. You will recognize this from hopefully GCSE maths. So we're talking about frequency density here. So for frequency density, so let's just write this down here. So for frequency density, so for frequency density, this is given as the frequency divided by the class width. So frequency. So frequency divided by class width. Okay. So there's not really anything more to kind of introduce here for histograms. Like I said, this is largely GCSE maths revision. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is run through one practice question on histograms, which is exploring how we find the height and width of a bar given certain bits of information. So this is something that you probably haven't seen before. Doesn't really come up, or it doesn't really come up at all on GCSE maths, but it's something that can be asked on the A level exam. So that's all we're going to take a look at for this video here. Let's just jump into our practice question here for histograms. So we just take a look then at this one practice question for histograms. So what we have here is a variable z that is measured with the result recorded to the nearest whole number. The results for 50 observations are given in this table below. So we can see the table here. We're then told that a histogram is drawn and the bar representing the 28 to 32 class as a height of 2.7 centimeters. So let's just highlight this here and a width of three centimeters. So for this question, here, we just want to find the height and width of the bar representing the 33 to 34 class. So all we're really concerned about here is these two classes. So let me just highlight these here. So these are the two that we're concerned about. Okay. So. This is a very typical exam style question for histograms. And I think there's a bit of a tendency here to overcomplicate questions that look like this. However, it is quite straightforward. So what we do here is we just start by forming ratio equations. And the ratio equations that we're going to use here are as follows. We have H1 over H2. So H1 over H2 is equal to FD1, where FD1 here represents the frequency density for the first bar or the first class here. In this case, that would be 28 to 32. And this is divided by FD2. So that's the frequency density for the second bar of the second class here. Okay. We also have a second ratio equation here that we're going to use. And it looks very similar to this. So it's going to be given as L1 over L2. This is the width of the first class here. So that's this width of this class. Um, or that would be the width of the bar, I should say, rather than the class. Divided by L2, so that's the width of the second bar. And this is equal then to the class width of this class here. So CW1 divided by the class width for the second class here. Okay, so CW2. What we need then is we need, so let me just do it um, in two bars here. So I've got CW1, I've then got H1, I've also got L1, and we also need the frequency density for the first class as well. Okay, so FD1. So we think about it in two different sections. I need everything for the first class or the first bar here, and we need everything for the second class and the second bar here as well. So CW2, H2, L2, and then finally frequency density 2. Okay. This is the way I always start a question like this. Okay. It's very kind of methodical, but I think it makes the question rather straightforward. So let's just start by finding everything that we need here. So for these values here, we've got everything that we need. So CW1, now just be careful here, we are working with continuous data. So the class boundaries then, this would be 27.5 for the lower class boundary. And then for the upper class boundary, that would be 32.5. Okay, so my class width here is 32.5 minus 27.5. So that would give me 5 there. Okay, H1, we are given, that's 2.7. For the width, that's also given, that's three centimeters. We'll just put three there. And then for the frequency density, well, remember frequency density is equal to the frequency divided by the class width. 
So my frequency here is 18. We divide that by the class width here, which is 5. We've got 18 over 5, which is equal to 3.6 there. Okay. Now for these values here on the right hand side, well, there's only two that we can actually start with. So we can find the class width here and the frequency density. H2 and L2, these are what we want to solve to find. That's what the question is asking for. Okay, so I'll put question marks for those two values. That's what we that's what we need to solve to find basically. Okay. Well, again, we need the class boundaries here. So my lower class boundary would be 32.5. And my upper class boundary would be 34.5. So my class width here would be 34.5 minus 32.5, giving us two there. Okay, so the class width, the second class here is two. Now for the frequency density here, so again, frequency divided by class width, my frequency is 10. We divide that by the class width, which is two. So we get 10 over two there, which is equal to five. Okay. And now we've got everything that we need then to use the following ratio equations. Okay, so let's do that underneath here. So H1 is 2.7. We divide that by H2, which obviously we don't know yet. We're going to solve to find that in a moment. We divide it by H2. This is equal then. So FD1, that is 3.6. And we divide that by FD2, which is 5. So from here, then we just need to solve now for H2. So this should hopefully be nice and straightforward here, just solving this equation. Well, 3.6 divided by 5, that's 0.72. And if I then times through by H2, what I get then is 0.72 H2 is equal to 2.7. And then divide both sides by 0.72 here. So therefore, H2 is equal to 2.7 divided by 0.72. What that gives us then here, if you do this correctly on your calculator, is 3.75. Okay. So we get 3.75 centimeters there. So that's this equation sorted. And I need to do the same here with the second equation. So we've got L1 over L2. So L1 is 3 over L2, which again, we don't know. We're going to solve to find that in a moment. So 3 divided by L2 is equal to CW1. So CW1 is 5 divided by CW2, which is 2. Okay, so we've got 5 over 2 there. Well, 5 over 2 is 2.5. So what I've got then is 2.5 L2. Obviously, you could keep this in exact form if you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, so I've got 5 over 2. Obviously, I've just times it through by L2 as well, just to make that clear. And that is equal to 3. And then finally, we just want L2 here, as I need to divide both sides by 2.5. So therefore, L2 is equal to 3 divided by 2.5. So 3 divided by 2.5 there. And again, just put this into your calculator here. What you should find then for L2 is we get 1.2 centimeters there. Okay. So let's just write this out then to finish with. So the height. So the height here that was H2. So that was 3.75 centimeters. So 3.75 centimeters there. And then for the width here. That was this value for L2, which is 1.2 centimeters there. Okay. And there we have it. Question complete. Now, you can, if you want, draw a diagram um, of the histogram. I don't think it's necessary for questions like this, but if you do find that helpful, feel free to do that. Okay. But there we have it. So you should get 3.75 centimeters for the height and 1.2 centimeters for the width there. And there we have it. So that gives the solution there to the only question for this video. So question one. And that's the end of this video on histograms.